Come on, Meg, let's give him a couple of pineapples. Mazel tov! In the early 40s, when the War Department needed Hollywood, Hollywood said, action. Some of the most celebrated directors were enlisted to produce World War II themed films that showed Americans what was at stake and helped stir up patriotic feelings. Many of the films became classics. The story of how Hollywood goes to war continues today. Take two. <laughs> this isn't just any film premiere. For the first time in Sony Pictures history, the studio threw a world premiere in Washington, D.C. Now that's big. As you can see, the red carpet's been laid out, the media is in place, and it's the calm before the storm. It's the world premiere of Fury, the new World War II action film starring Brad Pitt. Sony's red carpet gala at the museum may have brought ultimate Hollywood A-lister Brad Pitt to Washington, but the U.S. Army also had a starring role. World War II veterans were among the honored guests, and even retired four-star General Colin Powell worked the red carpet. It was a military movie. Uh, I'm very familiar with that kind of warfare. I've commanded those kinds of units. I've driven a tank like that tank. Uh, not in World War II, but after World War II. <laughs> and so it was a great, uh, a great, a great uh, relief from the normal work in Washington that allowed me to come down and uh, watch a good movie for a couple of hours. Based on a true story, the World War II action epic puts the brutal history of the final stages of war in the spotlight. The three World War II vets, all in their 90s, actually served as advisors on the film. Both bright stripes and a bright star. Fury's director David Ayer, known for gritty films like Training Day and End of Watch, is a Navy veteran himself with strong family ties to the military. Ayer went to great lengths to get World War II right, including finding authentic uniforms and artillery true to the period. Now, I understand that this has been a dream of yours to make this particular film. Absolutely. I mean, you know, since I've, I was a kid, I've been I've been fascinated by the war and a student of the war. And I think every every director should do a war movie at some point. But I mean, this was really a labor of love for me. And I understand you did it in 62 days, which is phenomenal for a war film. Yeah, it was brutal. Uh, we had a very uh, very specific plan. There's no safety net, and fortunately, none of the tanks broke down. The actors were incredible. We did so much preparation. They're ready to go the second those cameras turned on. And, and speaking of equipment, you use a lot of authentic uh, World War II weaponry. Exactly. I mean, we, we took a 30-ton tank and gave it to Mike Pena to drive around. <laughs> he did a good job. You weren't afraid? I didn't say that. <laughs> now, are you a big fan of the World War, II, World War II movies of the past, the, the big action films, Robert Mitchum and those? Absolutely, absolutely. But this is kind of a new school film, you know, because it really is about a family that, that, that fights together, lives together, brothers in a tank. And a lot of those older movies are more about a battle. This is, this is about a day in the life. Before filming, the actors underwent a four-month preparation process, including a grueling week-long boot camp run by U.S. Navy SEALs. John Bernthal, former star of Walking Dead, AMC's gory zombie series, knows his way around dark and hellish set pieces. This was a real boot camp sort of movie. Was that difficult for you to, to do this type of film? Uh, you know, uh, I love boot camp. I, 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 thought it was, I thought it was great. Look, I think that the idea here was to you try to try to dive in as full as we could. This was a, a total immersion movie. You know when you sign up for a David Ayer movie, it's uh, going to be a full experience. Um, as far as the fighting and the sparring in the boot camp, it was just a necessary component to making the movie. At the end of the day, we're, we're, we're actors. We wear makeup and say lines for a living. We're honoring guys who really risked it all and sacrificed, made enormous sacrifices for this country. And, to enjoy the freedoms we have that we can even make this movie is because of them. So I, I, I feel like, you know, the harder it got, the wetter it got, the tougher it got, I think the, the bigger the smiles on our faces was. And, and I think that, uh, you know, for us, it was really just about getting completely proficient on that tank. It was, uh, it was absolutely essential for David that we fired the tank ourselves, drove it our, ourselves, took it apart, put it together, ate, slept, 
peed, poop, whatever it took, just live on that tank and be and, and, and know that tank. And I feel like we achieved that. You know, that and really creating a family unit, that's really what, uh, that's what, that was our job on this movie. World premiere or not, when you add star and executive producer Brad Pitt to the premiere, it's a media sensation. He's just over there, Brad Pitt. We're waiting for our interview with him. He promised we think it'll happen. Stick with me. Jim Parrick of HBO's True Blood, who ups his game in Fury, particularly relished the realism of working inside an authentic World War II Sherman tape. The guys couldn't get out of it. The guys couldn't, you know, they would, they would not peek their heads out sometimes for a week, 10 days at a time. So it became a dorm, it became a prison, it became their home, all that stuff. Shia LaBeouf, who spent nearly every moment on the set, is reported to have intentionally cut his own face with a knife in an effort to make his war wounds more realistic for the film. There was a lot of uh, grittiness on this film, a lot of rain and a lot of fist fights that were encouraged. Yeah. Tell us about that. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's how men get close, you know? Women like to talk about things and men like to just do things together and that was sort of adventurous. You know, the fights felt like hugs. It just felt like quite intimate. I don't know about you, but like all my best friends have come on the other side of being bullied or, you know, fights have a way of bonding people. Michael Pena, the talented character actor known for his work in films like Crash, End of Watch, and American Hustle, hopes Fury will help fans better understand the Latino effort in World War II. What drew you to the character in this film? Well, specifically, it was that it was a Latin guy. Um, you know, David Ayer didn't shy away from it. There's a lot of like uh, Latino Americanos that actually fought uh, in World War II, like you know, somewhere close to like half a million, um, and they're unacknowledged in almost any war movie. And I'm glad that he's the one to to do it. And I understand that you guys spent so much time inside that tank that you start to call it home, and you considered your home and respected it. Tell us about that. Well, you know, it's so weird. You know, it's really hard to get in there. And then when, you know, after five months, you're just like, you're just hanging out and talking. And then, you know, it just becomes your office, so to speak, even though it's like this. It's, I mean, it was extremely cramped. But those guys would be bull crapping. And then me and Logan, you know, because we're sitting up in front. And I was just driving it. I'd have to drive a tank in reverse. And I just felt, you know, I just got comfortable with it. It was, it was fun, but it was nerve wracking. And finally, a conversation with the star himself, Brad Pitt. In the film, Pitt plays War Daddy, a battle-hardened army sergeant in command of the Sherman tank called Fury and its five-man crew as they attempt to strike at the heart of Nazi Germany near the end of World War II. I understand that this film was, in 62 days, was quite gritty, uh, quite miserable, but apparently you loved it. Yeah, it was kind of wonderful, too. <laughs> yes, yes, you know, listen, it was nothing compared to, you know, what the, what the real guys went to, and they, we talked about the constant lack of sleep, the lack of food, the exhaustion, the cold, the, the uh, and and the psychic trauma, the horrors of war, and and so, for, I mean, we were tourists and you know in their world in a way, and, and of course no one was shooting at us. But the more the the elements like added to that, to the feeling. I understand that you guys spent so much time in that tank that you actually came to love it, and you and your tempers flared when someone you thought dishonored it. Well, it's a strange thing that, and, and you know, all, 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 all the tank guys will, will explain this to you. It becomes your, I, it becomes your refuge in a way. And um, yeah, we, we, we became, very became very proprietary over our tank. That was our tank. We spent so much time in it, you know, day and night. We, we even slept out there, you know, in it some nights. And so there's something, I, I, it's inexplicable. Yeah. But thanks so much for right, speaking thanks. with us. I appreciate it. Fans of the Harry Potter films get to see Jason Isaacs in a different way. The actor says it was David Ayer's brilliant script and the complex human drama that appealed to him. Is it every actor's dream to be in a big, bad, action-packed, dramatic war film? I feel bad saying this, but no. <laughs> I think it's every 10-year-old's dream. Uh, it's every actor's dream to be in a brilliantly written story about human beings that you recognize, you engage with, you're, you know, you're amused by, you're horrified by, and, uh, and it's so rare that anybody gets to write and direct a story that is this rich in humanity. Normally the characters are wafer thin, they're written for teenagers to, uh, to understand and sum up in a sentence, and David Ayer's not that guy. 
David Ayer, who wrote Training Day and End of Watch, and, and uh, is a magnificent storyteller. So it's every actor's dream to be in something this surprising and this challenging. And so that's just another day in Hollywood on the Potomac, as we like to call it. There are film premieres, red carpets, and movie stars galore every day in Washington. Brad Pitt, Shia LaBeouf, happens all the time.